Hey friends, welcome back to the Chris Chow Show, where every week I break down the most important business news in Australia and around the world. This week we have an Aussie startup being valued at 15 billion US dollars, the Sydney Opera House launching its own streaming service, a Facebook hack that's impacting 7.3 million Australian accounts, and a crypto exchange going public very shortly. But before we jump into it, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Australian graphics design startup Canva has received another round of funding valuing the company at 15 billion US dollars. The company recorded over 500 million US dollars in revenue in the last financial year and is on track to hit a 1 billion dollars US in revenue this financial year. The company was founded in Perth but has gone global in the last 9 years with offices in Sydney Manila, Beijing, Wuhan, Austin, and San Francisco. So what does Canva actually do? Well, it's a SaaS company that provides easy to use online design tools, which lets users create images, social media graphics, videos, presentations, logos, and much more. Wait, what's SaaS? SaaS stands for Software as a Service, and put simply, it's a way to license software by allowing access on a subscription model. In the past, software was usually sold through a one-time license. Once you paid for it, then the software was essentially yours forever. With the SaaS model, you get access to the software as long as you're paying your subscription fee. Now, the benefit of this model for the customer is that they will always be getting the latest software updates and there's no need to purchase a new upgrade. And the benefit for the SaaS company is that they get a regular flow of revenue instead of one-time purchases from customers. Some examples of SaaS companies include Slack, Dropbox, Squarespace, and Zoom. Canva is actually free to use and provides users with over 250,000 free templates, 5 gigs of cloud storage, and hundreds and thousands of free photos and graphics. So you're probably wondering, how does Canva make money? Well, it has two paid plans, one called Pro and one called Enterprise, both of which are aimed at business customers. The Pro plan currently costs $164.99 a year and provides everything in the free plan plus some additional features. It's aimed at small and medium businesses. While the Enterprise plan currently costs $46 per person per month, it has all the features of the Pro plan plus some more. It's targeted at very, very large companies with features such as unlimited storage and 24-7 enterprise support. Canva also has plans for schools and not-for-profit organizations, both of which are free to use. My key takeaway from this is that as we spend more and more time online, the demand for visual assets such as social media graphics and short-form videos will continue to increase. Canva is perfectly positioned to become the most dominant graphics design tool because of its ease of use and also the massive library of templates it has. Now, if you're a small business owner or you have a side hustle, I definitely recommend checking out Canva and seeing how it can benefit your content creation. So back in March 2020, the Sydney Opera House had to close its doors due to the pandemic and pivot to digital events. Off the back of a very successful online season, the landmark venue has decided to launch a streaming service called Stream. Stream currently has over 30 hours of content, with performances from the likes of Bon Iver, The Cure, and Rita Ora. If you're more a classics fan, there's also performances by the Sydney Symphony Orchestra and Bell Shakespeare. There's even video highlights from festivals that have taken place in the Sydney Opera House in the past, including the All About Women Festival and Antidote. A good chunk of the programming is completely free to watch, and the rest can be rented. Prices range depending on the type of content. My key takeaway from this is that the pandemic forced a lot of businesses to rethink their operating model and the Sydney Opera House has done exactly so. This streaming service will not only generate a completely new revenue stream for the Sydney Opera House, it's going to also reach new audiences around the world, not just the typical visitor to Sydney. The private information of 7.3 million Australian Facebook accounts has been posted online after a very significant data breach. So this breach actually happened back in 2019, but the data was dumped online this week for everyone to see. A worrying aspect of this specific hack was the inclusion of mobile numbers. If you want to see if your email or mobile number has been impacted for this breach, 
you can use the website haveibeenpawned.com. The site is completely free and it's made by a security researcher named Troy Hunt. My key takeaway from this is this isn't Facebook's first data breach. In fact, there's been seven other ones in the past. And the unfortunate reality is that most people will forget about it or not even know that their data has been compromised. And in this week's crypto corner, we have US-based crypto exchange company Coinbase filing to go public on the 14th of April. The company has decided to go public on the NASDAQ with the ticker symbol COIN, C-O-I-N, and it's going to do so via a direct listing instead of a traditional IPO. Hold on, what's a direct listing? A direct listing means a company lists its pre-existing shares for sale, and they cut out any intermediaries such as underwriters or investment banks. Other companies that have done a direct listing in the past include Spotify, Slack, and Palantir. Coinbase is currently the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the US and it had a record-breaking Q1 with $1.8 billion in revenue and 6.1 million active users. My key takeaway from this is this is a watershed moment for the crypto industry and it's highly likely that Coinbase's share price will be shooting up on day one. Also, don't be too surprised if the price of Bitcoin starts climbing as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, an important disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. This video and my channel is for general information only. As with anything in life, you should do your own due diligence and seek independent advice.